so let me start um uh, let me share my screen quickly so guys so i'm just sharing my screen hope you're able to hear me and you're able to see my screen can somebody confirm can somebody confirm you're able to see my screen yes yes it's visible okay sure thank you so uh we are hey right so so let me start good morning good evening uh good afternoon and welcome to the session on i mean a demo on getting started with terraform in azure uh my name is santosh overall i've got 13 plus years of experience in it uh around 3 to 4 years of uh Three years of training experience overall in courses such as Linux, Azure, Terraform, uh, ethical hacking, etc. Uh, I have a leniency. I have a ten uh, interest towards cybersecurity. I've done quite a bit of certifications in cybersecurity, and I wish to move ahead with that. Also, uh, Azure learning is also what interests me. So I've done quite a bit of certifications learning in Azure uh, overall. Right. The scope of the demo is going to be this. So we will be looking at introduction to Terraform. Um, why Terraform? Basic uh, Terraform workflow. A demonstration of VM deployment. Uh, I want to show you like how, with the help of a Terraform code, we can deploy the resources that's going to be the objective of the demo so you can see how various files come together uh, what is uh, going on etc and we will also look at the course outline like at the end of the demo like towards near when we near the end of the demo we'll see the course outline what we'll be covering as part of the course the terraform on azure and finally the questions and answers okay so let me move on to the next slide, right? So Terraform is uh, maybe somebody you are here, so you are interested in Terraform or you want to know, uh, you want to get into the Terraform course, so that's why you are here. Terraform is infrastructure as code tool, right? IAC is called IAC tool. Um, this IAC tool, with the help of this tool, we write the code to deploy the resources, right? So irrespective of the provider, there are many providers out there in Terraform. When I say providers, the cloud providers is what I mean. So there are many cloud providers compatible with Terraform, like AWS GCP, Azure DigitalOcean, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, etc., etc. So they are compatible with Terraform. And you can pretty much say that Terraform is cross platform and it helps you orchestrate the entire deployment of the resources in the cloud. Now, if you look at the code, right, at a very uh, high level, the code is kind of easy to understand. Uh, not much things that you need to uh, know. It's a very simple JSON block, it's a JSON format of. Uh, similar to JSON, not exactly JSON, uh, JavaScript object notation, JSON, and it is easy to understand. So easy to understand, easy to deploy, just few few configurations and you are getting started with Terraform, right? Um, so that is the benefits of using uh, Terraform, introduction to Terraform. Terraform is a, is, uh, is a, again, there are open source, uh, uh, version of Terraform. There is also enterprise uh, solution you have from Terraform, Ashikop. So that's yeah. So that's a basic introduction of uh, um, Terraform, right? Uh, move on to the next slide. So why Terraform? We have already a little bit discussed that it's a multi-cloud, multi-provider support. Uh, it's a declarative model, right? So what is declarative and imperative? 
there's one more thing for imperative one is called declarative declarative you just say what you need at a very simple uh lines if i want to explain what is declarative declarative meaning you just define what you need right uh in a specific format if people if you, if you, if you i mean if uh, people in the session if you know ansible so ansible is a declarative uh configuration management tool right you just define what you need in terms of playbook uh place playbook and in, in yaml format yet another markup language format and it's ansible runs that and it figures out what exactly you need that is what terraform also follows it's a declarative uh language you just specify what you need and terraform does all the magic in the background and deploys the resources you can also have mutable and immutable infrastructure uh using terraform meaning you create it once but you apply something called locks right if you if you know in azure there is something called resource locks l-o-c-k locks so you can have the similar kind of setting in azure in terraform uh, to make the infrastructure as immutable and remove that lock and then you can delete it or modify it and you know there is something um, a, a main component of the terraform architecture is the terraform state at a at a simple level terraform state is just what is the what is the state of your infrastructure that's what state management is what is the state of your infrastructure how many resources you have in your in your re, in your cloud right let's say azure for example so the state is a file it's a simple file it's a json file uh, it's going to have the json content it's going to have the information of your current state of your infrastructure very simple and the state plays a pivotal role in uh, in terraform right so quickly we'll discuss that uh, uh, why this is crucial in this slide the basic terraform workflow now to start with terraform initializes a working directory the way terraform works right so now we understood what is the introduction what is the uh, what is the advantages let's just little bit move on to the workflow how it works Terraform initial init, right? It's a, it's a it's a command. Terraform init is a command. It's it's not a statement. It's a command. Uh, it initializes the working directory for Terraform. What is important for the Terraform is the working directory. Whatever is there in your working directory or the directory from where you are trying to from uh, the directory where you have the configuration files, that is important for Terraform. And that directory consists of all the configuration file what is the configuration file a configuration file is just a file that contains the code what is the code the code to deploy the resources very very simple that's the first statement then comes your plan so what is plan plan this is where the importance of state management or state file comes into uh, picture terraform maintains a state Terraform maintains a state file and you have Azure Cloud as well, right? Now, what plan does is going to look at your code, your working directory, and see what are the resources that it needs to deploy. What are the resources it needs to destroy? What are the resources it needs to change? Right? One. And how does it decide? It compares the state file now at this stage at terraform plan i mean terraform plan doesn't have state at the moment it, it has not yet created the state file only at the apply phase state is created terraform plan doesn't have any state so that means terraform will understand you're starting afresh so it's going to deploy all the resources and uh, sorry plan will just create a plan of what is that you're going to do what it is going to do it's going to, is it going to create the resource it's going to give you a simple plan like okay 10 resources are going to be created five resources are going to be modified two resources are going to destroy that's how that's the plan now the apply apply is where the actual uh resources are created in azure 
at this stage at the apply stage terraform a state file is created remember this terraform state file is created only during the apply stage what is the apply stage apply stage is where you have gone through the plan and you know what resources are going to be created and in the apply stage is where the actual uh, resources creation happens and at this stage the state is created what is the state state file will contain the existing state of your infrastructure meaning you have two resource groups it's going to have that you have five resource groups it's going to have that you are creating four machines out of it it's going to have that so whatever configuration file code that you have and you are deploying the resources that state it has remember it is only the state that is managed by Terraform. So whatever code that you have in step number one, whatever code that you have is what is Terraform managed. Outside of Terraform, if you go and manually create a resource, that is not going to be coming into the state file. Very important point to understand. But yeah, and then there is Terraform destroy where uh, you can destroy the resources. So you can delete the resource. That's what destroy does. Destroy will look at what is going to destroy. It's going to look at the state and then destroy the resources and update the state. So apply and destroy the state file is modified. So, uh, so just quickly, I want to show you the demonstration over here. So, so don't get intimidated, intimidated by the number of files here. Uh, it's very, very easy when you start looking at things this is going to be very very easy it's going to it's going to become like a second nature to you right uh, now to start with okay to start with i have a main dot here. now all the terraform files all the terraform configuration files will have an extension of tf dot tf so main dot tf locals dot tf linux vm dot tf networking dot tf etc right to start with i am creating a resource group so in azure everything goes by resource group so you need to create a resource group for anything and everything so as usual i'm going to create a resource group right fine in west europe all good the second step right for the vms to exist now in azure you have some dependencies right you have some dependencies on resources so one resource depends upon the other resource so and in portal, that's not much clear. You 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 can get an idea. Okay, this is what is going to create it first, and then the other resource is going to create first. But in Terraform, it's going to be clearly visible what is dependent, what is not. So for your VM to exist, if you've already deployed the VM, you know that you need a VNet to be there, right? That's where you will host your VM. So you need to have a VNet in place. So first, I'm creating a VNet as usual then in a vnet so not only you you, you you just don't need i mean vnet on its alone doesn't work you have to have a subnet on the vm vnet and i am creating a subnet here this is the code to create a subnet very very simple if you just look at it's very simple just few lines four lines of code you can create a vnet four lines of code you can create a subnet now then i am creating network interface now network interface is a separate resource in azure uh, if you know uh, that is required for the vm so i'm creating a network interface a virtual network interface here i'm creating two network interface resources because i'm creating one linux vm one windows vm and the network interface what is the characteristic of a network interface it is going to accept a private ip and a public ip right and I am creating a private IP here. I mean, private IP gets created automatically. I'm just saying that it has to be dynamic, not static. I'm not setting a static IP. It's a dynamic private IP. And I'm also attaching a public IP to the network interface. That's how I'm referencing here. Now, the next is just another network interface. I'm creating not related to this. This is something different. This is a different network interface I am creating. And I have some configurations over here, IP configuration. It's a nested block. This is called a nested block, block within a block. Then you have network security group. What is a network security group? It's a layer three, layer four firewall. Again, this is optional, but when you create, if you create the resource, if you create the VM manually, you will see that NSG is optional, but I'm just creating a network security group here. Very, very simple with a 
with a rule okay with a rule dynamic i'm using the dynamic block to uh, repeat the nested block multiple times within single block right and finally i'm i'm associating the network security group with the uh, subnet sorry network interface okay i'm associating that with the network interface card than subnet okay i'm not i'm not attaching that to a subnet i'm attaching that to the network interface card so dependencies are out uh, right now uh, the second thing is random right i'm go i have to create uh, now now the vms uh, if you create a vm in portal you'll have to put administrator user and the password now what i'm doing here is that i am uh, creating two random passwords right using the random module i'm creating two random passwords uh, one for linux one for windows so i'm just creating two random passwords it's going to be created with some text and i am passing that to the I'll, uh, why i'm creating this because i want to pass this to the vm very simple and where is the vm code finally we are in the vm code right if you see i have azure linux vm this is the vm and i am passing the password from the random model so nowhere you will see that i am uh, passing the password plain text so i'm not passing the password in the plain text at this stage i don't know the value of the random password that was generated but i'm also using a key vault right i'm i'm downloading i'm getting the key vault properties using data source and i am putting the i'm creating a secret with the value of the random password right so this is all going on in the background why i need this because i need to know the value otherwise i can't log in i can't provide this value to the administrators like linux admin and windows admin i cannot provide that i need to have the password value secret value right so for that i have to store that in the keyword very simple and the linux vm block is very simple this is just the linux vm this is all the vm block that you see over here around 33 lines uh, all these are default ones unless you want some changes in the this thing uh, in the image let's say let's say i want to have os test case i need i need to specify a disk size for the os i have to have a image reference so i'm specifying i need to create a ubuntu 2204 lts and uh, that's it it's going to create a linux vm2 coming to the windows i have windows vm i have a resource group name these are all mandatory which resource group this vm belongs to location this belongs to size of the vm admin username here also i'm not passing the direct values I'm, I'm not hard coding it i'm passing just the result from the random module right and i need to attach i need to associate or i need to reference the network interface to this vm block so because of course the network interface needs to be attached to the vm so i have to reference that and i specify the os disk and I specify the uh, source image reference and that's it i have the vars file here which is going to be the variable name this is the variable name variable name is vnet and the value is this variable name, variable name is vnet address space and this is the value it's a it's a list type value i have subnet information uh, it's a map type value uh, you have it's a list type value over here and subnets i have i have number of subnets it's a number integer type i have object ids uh, that means permissions on the key vault I have the VM list, uh, which is a list type variable. And to start with, I should always do a init. I'm going to do terraform.exe init. So terraform.exe is the binary that I downloaded from. Uh, it's binary you can download from Terraform uh, website itself. It has initiated the working directory. This is my working directory, which is TF demo. Is my working directory. I can do tf terraform.exe and then plan. Plan is where it's going to look at my existing infrastructure and it's going to say and look at the code and it's going to tell me what, how many resources to create. If you look at it, says 25 resources to add. Like there are, there were network interface uh, cards created, there are VM, VNet created, subnet created, public IP created, random module. 
all these things are so combining all these gonna it's gonna have it's gonna create 25 resources and i can do a apply when i do apply it's gonna ask me yes or no i can say yes uh, and then finally deploy the resource i can say yes and now slowly it's going to deploy the resources one by one okay so if you see all the resources are getting created what was the uh, uh rg name the rg name was app app rg let me go to my portal let me go to resource groups let me see if i have app rg created. yes indeed app rg is created and if you see the resources are getting created okay you see the resources are getting created if i refresh you will see the resources are coming up earlier it was five now it's seven okay now it's 10 so you see when we are one two three is getting created so this is the deployment demonstration of vm little comp i want to have a combination of complex as well as simple so i i thought to choose that as a demonstration uh, plan now the course outline is going to be like this we are going to look at the introduction to terraform uh, state management, basic resource deployment concepts, uh, how do you create multiple resources using meta arguments, locals and variables, data sources, provisioners, Terraform registry, Terraform workspace, cloud functions, lifecycle meta arguments, Terraform modules. These are high level topics again. We, there are many subtopics within these uh, broader topics and we will look at that. Okay. And we will see you need to have a free account, you need to have a VS code, that's all we'll discuss. And yeah. So any questions we have it's a time for QA. Um ask me anything, anything related to the technologies, career, or definitely terraform. You can ask. Yeah, uh, just wanted to know how these Since, models uh, are defined yeah. in the Terraform. What uh, is the module basically and how they are defined? Module we will define. I mean, we will, based on our requirement, we'll, we'll write the module, we'll use it. So we'll use it. For example, uh, I'll just open a folder here, which is uh, modules VM. So I have these modules written myself. And if you look at there is a separate module for networking, storage, VM. And in the main, I'm calling these modules. So networking module, I'm calling, uh, I'm specifying the source and I'm passing the values for the values for the variables and I'm calling the Windows module, etc. So what yeah, kind so of resource, yeah, what kind of resource uh, like we will work here on deploying using terraform let's say for example uh, like uh, azure policies or something also yeah we will deploy vms we will deploy um, virtual machines linux windows we will deploy load balancer we will deploy uh, the vnet subnets network security groups uh, sql databases web app um, there are many things right uh, we'll also look at app insights we'll deploy app insights uh offer the web app um yeah so these are the i mean these are the the focus is not on azure resources the focus is on terraform concepts of course we with that concept we'll deploy the resources so uh not much resources will deploy in azure for uh you'll not see much variety of resources will create on azure but the concept is important so the course is focused on the terraform concepts than your azure resources and we will also look at Kubernetes cluster. We'll try to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Yeah. 
Santosh just one question um related to this. Are you planning to uh, add to end project and various domain reason or DR activity kind of the automation? No, DR activity see that's that's gonna be like you can have a separate set of code for DR activity is built in uh your Azure, right? Depending upon the resource. Say if it's a VM, you have disaster recovery already built in, so you have to create that uh for Various past service you have DR built in by Microsoft, or you have to create. So it depends upon the individual resources. The DR thing will come. Uh, the focus of this again, guys. The focus of this course is Terraform. Terraform concepts is what we are going to look at, right? No Azure concepts. See Azure concepts we look at, but not go deeper because that's not the focus, right? Focus is. Terraform cons how we deploy the resources, multiple resources, conditions, um, uh, you know, uh, checks and balances in Terraform variables. That's what we're going to look at. Are you planning to uh, provide any project like project that we can use? Or... Whatever we are going to whatever we're going to start from day one itself is real time. There's nothing like to it's not real time. Everything this whatever I showed you itself is a real time, right? One. Project, we do have a project. I'll tell you there's a project like we'll deploy three VMs, we'll deploy a web app in that, we will deploy databases in that, and we'll try to I'll try to show you uh, how the connectivity works. It's all going to be single code. Yeah, so my question is uh, here, Santos, like um mm -hmm. the first thing is no doubt, like uh, the, the Terraform concept is very important, like local data source provision or whatever, right? And at the end of mm -hmm. day, we will use those concepts to deploy all the Azure resources, right? Like this mm -hmm. concept is right. So for mm -hmm. deploying, deploying uh, using Terraform, like uh, we need to have a you know solid understanding of the Azure resources, right? Like let's say if we want to deploy like a Azure SQL means like uh, first thing if we don't know how to uh, uh, you know work on SQL and Azure portal, then you know do we understand like Terraform? Uh, you using right no right so the first thing is we need to understand on azure side too right yeah that is correct so you need to know azure that is uh given right i mean terraform is the driver sitting right. in the driver seat that's it. so azure knowledge is important so yeah maybe what we will do as we move ahead as i create the resources i'll i'll create the manual i'll go for a manual approach and then we'll create the resource in the terraform that i can do okay yeah what i mean Azure like oh, yeah so what i like to request is like once we i mean once we go over those uh like fundamental concept or the important part of uh, uh you know the terraform so if we if you can walk out like let's say how to create one of the example you know a lot of time people asking me at the time interview like Azure policies uh, deployment using Terraform, right? Something like this will help in the clearing the interview also, you know, if we can move ahead for that way. Sure, if you need policy, I can deploy some policies and show you that's fine. I can do that. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank sure. you. Hmm. Anybody, any questions? how many days will be the total course and how many like uh, i mean what is the time every day i mean one hour one uh, that's not hour a, hour. that's not a desired yeah correct. that's not a desired uh yet uh we'll have to work with uh i'll have to work with visual part team um one number two uh it's gonna be around 25 depends it depends upon the pace of the course it's around 25 plus hours i would say 25 plus hours it may go less than that it may go beyond that uh, depending on what is the doubts, so there there could be there could be uh, days where we are only discussing the doubts, so it could extend. You can say twenty five plus hours of the training sessions we have, uh, demo, explanation, yeah. The daily is going to be mostly attentive. I'm planning to have one hour daily. Yeah. So a lot of time people talk about like. 
cloud automation means like is this the same thing like terraform uh, sometimes people like even ask a uh, cloud automation using terraform and also python can we do this using python too like this automation no you have terraform you don't need python you don't need python you have terraform that's enough that's the whole purpose of uh, terraform right yeah i'm not trying to say that it's not possible in python but it is possible in python i'm not saying no but Terraform is purpose built for this, so we will go. We'll learn Python. Sorry, we'll learn Terraform. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now my resources are getting created somewhere. I don't know. I went away from the this thing. Okay. Okay, any other questions anybody has? What is the fee structure? Um, fee structure you can check with the official part team. I'm not sure. And uh, do you conduct uh, for AWS as well? No, it's only in Azure, for me in Azure. But whatever you will learn, it's going to apply for Terraform and uh, AWS as well. See, the focus is again Terraform focus. Fo the course focus is Terraform concepts, not where it's cloud agnostic, right? Uh, so, whatever fo points you learn in here is going to be applicable for AWS as well from a Terraform standpoint. Okay. This question is for question only Azure or AWS as well. Azure. Okay. See, what the focus is Terraform. Again, guys, let's let's be let's look at what we have. The focus is Terraform, not Azure or AWS or GCP. No. We are good. so we are going to use Azure as a platform to deploy. That's absolutely fine. So think about this is more of Terraform, geared towards Terraform concepts than cloud. Okay. It's cloud. It is, it, and whatever you're going to learn, it's going to be applicable for all the providers, irrespective of which cloud it is. Okay. Any questions anybody has? For uh, storing the secret uh, variables, I mean, uh, what is the best approach we are following? Uh, storing, you can use environmental variables. Uh, that's one secure way. You can use environmental variables. Uh, use Terraform Cloud. So it's already there. We will see that Terraform Cloud. You can, you can use Terraform Cloud and store the variables there as environmental variables. That's possible. But that will be again uh, enterprise version, right? If you're going for uh, a cloud. Yeah, enterprise. I think free version you have some limitations, uh, but in even free version you can store the variables. I we will see that as well. Uh, how to run? Uh, how to? How do you? Uh, how do you locally uh, run the? I mean, Terraform run is local, but you are that run is actual in cloud. It's like that, and. Uh, you know, you have also Terraform Cloud versus with GitHub or GitLab, whatever. So that is also there. That also we look at. So you can add the way as environmental variables in Terraform Cloud. It's going to be like write once, sorry, write multiple times, just read once. You just you can just read once. That's it. You can't read it multiple. So anybody got hold of it, they can't read the value. So it's so like are write. You, are you going to? Uh, are you going to cover this integration with uh, either Git or GitHub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. GitHub will will do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, just talk to Visual Path about your requirements and. Uh, 
uh, talk to them about the timings. I'll also talk, discuss with them. And soon we will meet in the course. Yeah. Santosh, one last question, if you are okay. Mm -hmm, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, Go ahead. I just wanted to know, I mean, how this, let's say, for example, in the normal scenarios like code, we we have some deep uh, debugging facility, right? In Terraform, how we debug the code? Yeah, we have we have debugging. We have debugging options. We have. There is and a debug level error for both. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll discuss that. I mean, there are there are a couple of environmental variables you have to set. Uh, you have to set that. See, mostly that even the errors that you are coming in the Terraform, you will be able to understand mostly ninety five percent. You don't need a debugging in Terraform, um, because it's kind of verbose from what I understand, what I've seen till now. But if you need, there are a couple of environmental variables. Okay. Okay guys, thank you for your time.